You're live. Hi, everybody. Hi, everybody. Uh, my name is Scott McPhee. I work for the Office of Sustainability at Dalhousie University. Getting some feedback from somebody. Um, yes, welcome to my basement. This is, uh, I, if Dalhousie wasn't closed right now, I'll be doing this in the Campus Bike Center. But currently, we are in the situation that we are in. And I am doing this in my lovely workshop down the basement here. Um, so what I'm going to be covering are the kind of the ABCs of bike maintenance. You know, how to keep your bike rolling during the cycling season, or if you're, um, you know, all season cycling, how to tips uh, on to keeping things flowing properly and smoothly. Um, things I'll cover is how to change a flat tire. Um, the wear and tear of your uh, drivetrain and shifting issues and any brakes, uh, adjusting your brakes, making sure that you have brakes. You know, maybe I won't go into too depth of, uh, of things because there's tons of videos out there uh, that you can Google uh, more in depth than watching me in my kind of darkish basement um, trying to fix stuff. Uh, but I'll kind of just cover the topics that you need to know to kind of, uh, you should know, you need to know um, that, when you when you ride a bike, whether it be yours or a friend's or whatever. Um, first thing I'll cover would be how to change a flat tire. All right. So uh, tire. There, there are several different sizes of tires um, and tubes. Um, the size of the tire is written on the sidewall of the, the tire. Uh, 700. Uh, most adult bikes uh, these days, commuter bikes, road bikes, gravel bikes, whatever genre of bike, are usually 700C bikes, 700C tires. So you need to know that. That's uh, one thing. Another thing is you need to know your size of your tube. And that's usually, if it's 700C tire, it's usually a 700C um, tube. 700 by, in this case, this is a 700 by 28. It could be a 700 by 23, 25, 28 up to 40 depending on the type of bike you have most commuter bikes are 32 35 uh, most road bikes are 25 20 um, and there's different sizes 26 by you know 1.5 1.95 so if you need to buy a new tube from a bike store uh, take the tube in with you um, that's one way to do it uh, so the staff there know exactly what you need to get or copy the sizing down on a piece of paper as long as you know that 26 by something or 27, uh, 27RC, whatever it is, or kids' bikes, whatever. Um, some basic things that uh, you need to have for basic maintenance um, would be, or for a tire, taking out a tire is this tool here. It's a tire lever. Uh, it has a nice little handle on it so you don't scrape your knuckles. Um, and Allen keys. Most bikes these days are fixed by a basic Allen key set to tighten up most of your bolts. Yeah. So I realized as I was prepping for this uh, video is that I don't have any patches. I, I usually don't patch my tires. I usually, um, if I get a hole in the tire from a puncture, um, I usually just recycle it. Um, Nova Scotia now has a recycling program for all their, all their bike tires and tubes. So I just, save up all my things all my ties and tubes when they're worn out and then take them to my local bike store uh, i usually just throw in a new tube in my in my tire and my uh, tire uh when i do get a flat because i do long rides and i don't want to sometimes the patch doesn't adhere to the rubber of the tube uh so i don't want to take that chance if i'm out on a long ride and that, that tube coming uh losing its air because of a faulty um a faulty tube, a faulty patch. Um, so I, I just basically put a new tube in and recycle, um, recycle the old tube. Um, before you take off the, uh, before you take off the tire, you should check the outside of the tire. Um, looking for the thing that punctured your tire. Basically, it could be a piece of glass, it could be a piece of metal. Um, staples are very popular uh, for puncturing tires. Um, had a friend of mine run over a fox tooth, uh, so that punctured his tire. Um, I usually go slowly with my bare hand, and I get a better feel of it, but you may want to wear uh, some gloves, just keep your hands clean, and uh, do, it, do it lightly, uh, because you could cut your hands on the 
whatever's sticking out of your tire. Um, this is also a good time to check. Um, I'm hoping that the sound is good here. Again, down the basement, um, the lighting is not great, but hopefully the sound is uh, so great. So maybe if one of my avid listeners are out there saying um, if the sound's good or not, um, that'd be great because um, we're on live so people can uh, text something to me. Um, yeah, so back to the tire. Uh, since you're awesome, thanks, Daniel. Um, so since you got a flat tire and you need to change the tube inside, uh, hopefully it's just the hopefully it's the tube and not the tire. Um, it's also a great time to check the quality, the wear and tear of the tire. Uh, some things you may want to look at are if there's any nicks um, in the tire. Uh, if there's kind of slits in the tire, unfortunately, then you're you need a new tire. But if it's just uh, nicks smaller than the head of um, of a pencil, you're fine. Um, anything bigger than the size of uh, like the top of a pencil um, where the lead is, you may want to think about maybe checking uh, getting a new tire. Um, definitely, if you if you miss something and there's a hole in there, uh, or if you see the hole and then you put your top your tube in, and then you see the tube actually poking up through that hole, then obviously it's time for a new tire. Um, any cracks, any holes to tires, any discoloration. Most tires are black, 95% uh, of them, I guess, uh, are black. But if you see any kind of other coloration of the tube or of the tire, then that's kind of a sure sign that your tire, the outside part of your tire, the rubber, the main rubber, is, is completely worn down, and then it's time to um, get a new tire. Um, good tires usually run around $35 to $40. Uh, there's different, many different types of tires out there, quality of tires. Um, yeah, I'll leave it up to you, to your budgets to go and um, pick out some good tires. This tire here, this tire is actually Gator Skin, Continental Gator Skin, one of the best tires around for puncture proof, um, come in different sizes. It's a bit harsh tire because of the puncture resistance of the tire. It makes for a harsh ride, especially for road bikes because of the, the type of uh, rubber that's used in there. Again, there's different qualities to a tire. But for uh, my commuter bike, I run gator skins because I run them all year round and they're just kind of bomb proof in a sense. Um, another thing you need to look at is the pressure you put in your tire. Um, yes, it's Kevlar lined. Um, yeah, one of, the, one of the good tires. This one is about 80 bucks. Um, and the, those type of tires, the ones that are around the, you know, above 60 bucks are usually Kevlar lined of some type. Um, yeah. And then different compounds of the rubber, uh, make it last longer. Puncture resistance. So you get many years out of the tires. Um, so that's all adding into the price of the tire. Um, what was I going to say? Uh, yeah. So let's get it ready into, Although I don't have patches, so that's my rant that I was going on originally. Uh, I can talk you through on how to patch a tire. All right. So let's pretend that we identified uh, that we located the staple that you ran over. A little pro tip that I like to use is using a marker. Circle where you took the item out of the staple. And then so when you take the tire and tube, off the together off the rim you can go to that exact spot and locate where the puncture of the tube was so using your your little tire lever and some tires you can take off without the lever but it's good to have with you so let's get just so the side of the tire whether it be uh, so there's two types of rim um, uh, uh, two types of wire there's a wire bead and there's Kevlar bead so what you need to do is take your little tire lever Get it underneath the wire bead or the Kevlar bead of the tire, and then obviously, uh, I, I cheated on this. I actually took the air out and took the tire off, and then re put it back on to make it easy for me to uh, to take it out. Because sometimes they are a bugger to get off. Uh, yeah, so slowly take it rip it right off, and then together. Taking tube and tire together right off. Okay. 
and I know that I puncture it was right around there. Uh, so because I, I marked the tire, so I'm taking that off together, and I'm going to keep the top part of the tire where the puncture was straight up. So I can go back to that and uh, locate exactly where the puncture was in the tire. Um, so using my trusty pump, um, I'm going to pump up my tire. All this does is tells you exactly again where the puncture is in the tire, in the tube. Okay, and I can, you know, by my ear, I can locate it. I can hear the hissing noise. Um, or I can go and like this with my hand, I can feel the, the pressure coming or the, the air coming into the tire when I locate that. And again, if you if you didn't look if you didn't circle the tire, once you locate the hole on the tube, again circle that. So when you put this down on the floor or desk, or whatever, and go to get your patch kit, you can come back and know exactly where the hole was in your tube. All right. Um, yeah, so I don't have a patch kit. So a patch kit usually comes with some um, sandpaper, emery board, or a metal little metal thing that kind of scrape up your your tube. Comes with several different sized patches um, and some glue. So uh, glue tends to dry out uh, over time. So when you puncture it uh, the first time because you're changing your tire, uh, keep an eye on it because it may, I don't know the exact lifespan of tube, uh, glue for, for a tube kit, uh, four months maybe if, if that. Uh, so, you know, you may not get a flat for another year. You may get a flat three weeks from now, but keep an eye on the, the glue because it's kind of a pain ass going to change a flat tire and then your glue's all uh, dried up. Um, you have to go to head, your bike store and get one. So let's pretend that I do have a patch kit. Okay. Scrape down. That's just kind of roughing up these, the surface of the of the uh, tube. Okay. Then after you do that, you get your your glue. And depending again, depending on the size of the hole, if it's a small hole, definitely patch it. If it's bigger than you know the size of a, a pencil, uh, then the patch may not hold because it's the uh, may not hold because the the hole is just too big. Uh, and the pressure from the going up to 80 psi just is going to pop off. Uh, the air is going to seep out, seep out through the patch. Uh, it just won't hold. So, uh, like I said, I always I always throw a new tube in there um, and recycle my uh, my existing tubes. But if it's a small hole, um, patch it. So, scrape it up. Get some glue, size of uh, a nickel. Uh, the glue has to be like the size of a nickel, a, ni uh, a nickel, um, and then kind of let it dry up for a little bit. Maybe wait uh, 30 seconds, 45 seconds to kind of get the glue a little tacky, and then you peel off the the, the plastic part of the patch, and then patch, put the patch over. And then obviously there's no air in the tube. Um, put the patch on. You can hold down on it, uh, the patch onto the tube, and then or you know put it on a flat surface and get something uh, like a heavy book to put down on the tube. So just, and you wait maybe five minutes. Um, yeah, wait five, 10 minutes before the, so the patch can, the glue can patch and can dry up a little bit. And then once you do that, uh, uh, what I like to do is put a little bit of air in it, not too much, just kind of, so it takes shape of the, of the, so it fits better into the tire. So going back to our tire, so I, originally I circled where the hole was. Um, I'm just reading some of the comments. Um, why do I want the, it's vulcanized compound, I believe. Again, uh, you just wanted to kind of tack, tack up a little bit. Just it helps the patch uh, stick to the rubber. Um, so some other comments here. If you don't have a marker or find it hard to see on a black tire, a white soap bar works. Yeah, that's great. All these little comments. Um, yes, a bucket of water. If you're having trouble locating the um, the hole in the tube, put some air in it, 
put in a put some soap on it, soapy water. That you see bubbles coming back. Dip the tube inside the bucket of water and then look for look for um, holes. One thing I forgot is if the hole is by your stem, you're out of luck. You can't get a patch on that. If the hole is there's a seam on tires on tubes. If the hole is next to a seam, again a patch just won't uh, won't stick properly to that. Um, there's always going to be a little bit of airflow because of that seam, and it won't. Don't even try it. It's not going to work. It may work for maybe a day or so, but then uh, again, better to kind of just throw in a new tube um, than trying to patch something that's going to go flat on you and make you late for work or whatever. It just won't let you ride your bike. So um, yeah, another thing we do if you didn't if you didn't locate. Uh, and pro tip, if you didn't locate what caused the flat tire, uh, it maybe fell out, and take a cloth or take your hand and rub the inside of the tire. Um, that's kind of one of the main things, main mistakes people make is they originally they just take the, the old tube in or out of the tire, put a new one in there, pump it up, put it back on the bike, and away they go. And then a day later, the tire loses air. Uh, because whatever is embedded in there, you may not have found it on the outside, but sometimes it's it's too far inside the tire, but just enough on the inside of the tire, just kind of peeking out, causing once you inflate it again, the rubber expands, causing whatever's in there to kind of poke itself out into your tube and then you get a flatter tire again. Um, so with your hand, fingers, just slowly rub the inside of the tire. That um, that usually locates you. Usually, locate able to locate whatever's punctured in there because it's just kind of poking through there. Or squeeze the outside of the tire. Kind of roll it back and forth on your tire. On your to kind of look for where the hole is. There might be multiple holes because you multiple pieces of glass or wires and stuff like that um, that you ran over, and the glass or wire maybe just kind of poking in. On the inside of the tire, on inside of the tube, inside of the tire. Sorry. Um, another thing about the gator skins and some other tires. The gator skins have these two little marks on them. They're just wear lines. So people think, oh, that's the hole there, but no, it's manufactured in there. So uh, once those two little dots disappear, uh, then the tire is worn down to uh, I don't know how many percentage points, but uh, worn down enough that you may think about uh, may want to think about actually changing up the tire. Uh, you may have some life left in it, but uh, that's a sure sign that your tire is starting to go on you. Um, another little thing to do is uh, worn out tires usually start to flatten off. Usually when they're new, they're kind of rounded. New tires tend to, um, uh, older tires tend to round or flatten off a little bit. So that's another little tip to watch out for. Um, rear tires wear out quicker than front tires because the weight of the rider is on the back end of your bike causing it to wear faster so uh, what you could do is just flip uh, maybe every season uh, flip the two tires put the front one on the back and back one on the front so you get more life out of your tires but definitely the back tire is going to wear out a lot quicker than the front one um, and having the right pressure in the tire um, wears the tire less also so that's something to keep uh mind of okay so getting back to our little uh tire and tube setup so we patched it or we're just going to replace it um what i like to do and aesthetics is the big thing here is so the the logo of the tire have the valve stem in line with that it just looks nice on the bike um, and then and then one other thing uh, a couple of things here but this one here the tires sometimes have a direction arrow uh, most tires have a direction arrow um, um, so locate the whatever direction it's going in and make sure if it's a rear tire the cogs, the gears, uh, are on the right-hand side of your bike. So, and it rolling this way, obviously. So, make sure the tire corresponds the, to that direction. Okay. 
Um, it's not a huge thing if it's backwards. And, you know, some tires uh, may wear down a bit quicker because of the tread pattern on on the bike, but it's again, it's more for aesthetics than anything. Um, and there's two types of tubes. Sorry, there's a Presta tube, the skinny one with the little um, little tighten that up or a Schrader tube, which is very similar to a car tire. Uh, and your pump, uh, you need to know what tire you have or tube you have to make sure your pump can do the, uh, the head on the tube, okay? Um, people like the Schrader ones more than the Presta ones. Um, I'm the other way, I like the Presta ones rather than the Schrader ones, but two to zone, six of one half of the other. Um, so when you're putting, you won't be able to see this, but when you're putting the tube back in, I put a little bit of air. Quality maybe my, just my hot water heater just turned on. So um, maybe you might not hear my voice. Um, so I don't know if you can see me. Um, this is the tricky part here, getting everything in. Okay, I'm gonna have to dip down and do it my way. It makes it a lot easier. One sec here. All right, back. So I usually put it up against my legs so I can get a better control out of um, putting the tire two back up. A little bit of air in there helps. Put one side on first. Awesome. Thanks, Brian. Uh, I have a little bit too much air on my tube, so I'm taking that out. And so once I get one side on, I start working on the other side. And this is going to take, first time I did this, I was so frustrated with it. Just wasn't doing what it's supposed to be doing. And it takes a little time to get used to how to do it. The little tips, you know, putting air in the tire and the tube first uh, saves it from folding up or twisting around inside the tire. You don't want that to happen because you, if you don't catch the fact that it's folded up on each other or twists around, you go to ride, you pump it up and it feels normal. You go ride and if it's folded up or twisted, then you get this bump, bump, bump when you're riding and you, you feel it through the bike frame. So, and then again, it may cause flat tire, it may not, but it may cause flat tire. So make sure you put a little bit of air in um, to kind of make it take its form. Yeah, or, or a pinch flat, right? Exactly. Okay, so um, on some road bikes, uh, maybe some hybrid bikes also, when you're coming to the last part of it, last section here of getting the tire on the rim, Sometimes you have to kind of force it. What I like to do is kind of hold it on and then kind of hold it over like that. And then you kind of have to twist it. Sometimes you really have to force it. Other like mountain bike tires or some bigger tires like 705, 40, um, there's, there's more room in the tire to kind of put on the rim. So it makes it a little easier. But I find sometimes road bikes or higher end bikes, this, the, the, the way they make the tires and rims together sometimes just the pain uh, to get on but uh, stick with it also no trip it tr trick is to get some soapy water and then put it on the wire bead or the kevlar bead of the tire and that sometimes helps to kind of put the last little bit on um my water heater just shut off so back to normal um one last thing before we pump up the tire two last things i guess the sidewall of your rim uh should be flat Older rims, if you're a winter rider, um, you may want to check the sidewall of the rim. If it's concave, uh, showing a bit of that. Uh, if it's really concave, then time to get new rims, to new wheels and stuff like that, because you could your braking surface is totally gone, um, and then you're just going to crack the rim when you apply your brakes. Uh, so time for new wheels um, or new rims if you want to rebuild. Um, so check that. It should be nice and nice and. Um, Nice and smooth and it's flat, mostly flat. Another thing is to kind of just uh, squeeze your spokes. If any, anyone's spongy 
or if you've noticed before uh, that your wheel is untrue, that's because your spokes are loose. So since the, the wheel is off your bike, time to do that now. Kind of just go both sides, give it a little squeeze. Um, if they're spongy ones, and you can try to chew up your tire if you have a, a truing stand, um, but take it into a bike store, take it into the campus bike center at Dalhousie. Uh, they'll help you chew up your tires. Um, take it into a bike store. Um, these days you don't have to wait a little while, but they'll do it for you. It's not that expensive, uh, but it'll save uh, save a lot of hassle. Okay, so tires back on. Um, yes, truing wheel and growing Ruel said uh, uh, truing wheel is is hard to do. You should know how to. It takes a lot of practice. Um, last step is to pump up your tire. So uh, yeah, so again pressure of the tire is written on the sidewall of, of your tire. Um, this tire here can go up to, I think, 120. Uh, that's way too high. Um, I'm 190 pounds-ish, uh, so I like to ride with my back tire around 95 to 100. Front tire is a little less. Uh, some other people, depending, sometimes it depends on weight, sometimes it depends on the quality of the tire. Um, I usually have it on the side, the max side of my uh, pressure than rather the low side because again uh, pinch flats but not too high because it's really rough ride not too low because then you get pinch flats like i said so pump up your tire to the recommended pressure um and then you one last thing you need to do even before you pump uh, pump up the tire is just pinch the 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 tire to make sure the tube is sitting properly inside the tire uh because when you go to pump it up and uh, the tube is poking up between the, the the bead of the tire and the rim, and you don't notice that, then you may get another flat tire. Uh, you may have to use uh, the tool to put the tire back on. Please use a tool, don't use a spoon, don't use a, um, a screwdriver, anything sharp like that, because you're just gonna puncture your, your tube again. I, I used to do that when I was a kid. Um, yeah, and then pop it up, um, pay attention to the pressure, pay attention to the, the fact that the tube is sitting properly inside the tube, inside the tire. All right. Um, some people ride it higher. Yeah, efficiency. Yeah, higher the pressure, efficiency. There's lots of comments on the, the chat here. That's great. Um, so getting the tire, the, getting the wheel back on the uh, bike, especially the rear one, um, that's, I don't know if you can see this, um, one tip, I, I have a nice stand here. It's great to have because it's easy to work on your bike. If you're doing it, uh, without a stand, um, a tip is to shift the chain into the small cog. Um, that allows you to kind of line up everything when you're putting things back in, uh, it lines up the derailleur with the small cog and makes it a lot easier to get things back up into the frame of the bike and um, make sure if you have quick release wheels, make sure that you um, center up the wheel properly in the frame. And then with the palm of your hand, press down on the quick release. Um, for those people who do not know what a quick release is, is just this little thing here. Um, there's a direction of it. Yeah. It goes up like that. Um, some, most bikes, have a close written on the here or on the inside just to tell you that it is closed um yeah there's a lot more stuff i can talk about for wheels but for right now it's just keep it simple how to change a flat tire um front tire is exactly the same uh your hands don't get as dirty because of the the cogs in the back with the grease um yeah um that's pretty, pretty much it for that if you have any questions uh please um you know, on the chat here, we can talk about them. Um, brakes, uh, the ABCs of brakes. A was air in your tires, B is brakes. So um, I ride mostly road bikes. Uh, I haven't ridden the flat handling bars with the levers for many years, uh, but it's pretty much the same thing. When you squeeze your levers uh, and you're squeezing, you should have, if it's set up properly, you should have like a, a finger width between the bar and the lever when you squeeze that means there's enough pressure in there to stop you adequately or more than adequately if you squeeze your lever and it's touch it squeezes right into the handlebar grips 
that means there's no the 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 ratio of the pull for the cable is totally off and you're there's something going on either your cables are stretched out or they're breaking through the housing or most likely it's your rim uh your uh, your brake surface your brake pads are, are totally uh shot um a very common uh brake pad is this guy here for v brakes uh super easy to to adjust and maintain there's usually i don't know if you can see this you definitely can't see this in this stock there's usually a wear line uh going right across here if you if it's gone past that then you're way past your limit and you need to uh you need to get some new brake pads um they're not that expensive i think for a set of them is eight bucks uh depending on the quality um yeah, these are Jaguar brake pads. Every bike store should have them uh, or a reasonable facsimile of them. Um, super easy. There is a left one and a right one, and there's a bit of a curve uh, to them. So that curve corresponds to the curve of the rim. Um, when you're setting them up, and this one here, again, I don't know if you can see that. Um, there's a bunch of little washers and stuff like that. Before you take off your old set, um, pay attention to the setup of where they sit in the brake, the brake caliper, that part of the brake where it touches the rim. Um, <laughs> no problem. Uh, rule of facsimile. He hasn't heard that one in a while. Um, I'm a bit old school. Uh, so yeah, pay attention to the setup here because there's lots of different washers and spacers and stuff like that. So you want to get that perfectly. Maybe take a picture on your phone of how it is set up on your bike before you take off the old pads um, and so when you put the new pads on there you can just kind of re-engineer it uh, yeah. um, so what you need to know uh, when you're setting them up is that they um, let's go this way um, yeah I'll get the other one because it's the right one um, anyway it doesn't matter when you're putting your brake pads on the rim surface it needs to be flush. It can't, the rim, and, or so the tire and the the uh, brake pad can't touch. Rubber on rubber, not a good thing when you're, when you're stopping. And it can't be too low because um, then you only have half the brake surface touching, half the brake, brake pad touching the surface of your rim. Uh, so you only have half the efficiency of your brake pad. Um, so make sure it's flush up against there. Um, Another little pro tip, if you're putting, uh, not that I'm a pro, uh, a lot of friends uh, at, uh, at, yeah, I've learned this over the years, I guess you can say. Um, when you're putting on new brake pads, get some sandpaper and just scuff them up. Again, that there's a bit of a gloss on brand, brand new brake pads. You wanna kinda get that gloss off uh, and that just helps everything grab a little bit. Um, out there when uh so when you're doing that make sure they're flush they surface uh you may want to what's called towing them in so the back back part of the brake rim uh, the brake surface is slightly farther away than the front part because you you want your brake pads everybody knows that horrible squealing noise when you come into a stop everybody just do that and everybody's in, um, walking on the sidewalks to listen to you or hear you and they point at you um that squealing is caused by contamination of your braking surface. Contamination is is oils from the um, street, uh, dust, dirt, grime, all that stuff, um, or new brake pad surface not being rubbed down, um, kind of diminishes that. Uh, also, uh, water. Um, you know, ra rainy days is it exacerbates the squealiness. So. Keeping your rim surface and your brake pad surface clean. Um, so you know, after you know, I like to do some basic maintenance on a regular basis. Every week or so, I usually wipe down my rims. It lengthens the life of the rim surface, uh, so you don't have to check out a couple hundred bucks for new uh, for new tire, new wheels, um, and it stops that horrible, horrible squealing noise. Um, embarrassing. So, uh, but the, the towing them in kind of looks like you're that uh, the front of the brake pads here and your back is here so it's kind of when you squeeze your brake pads the front of the brake pads hit first and then the back ones come in like that a little bit and it kind of helps dissipate the moisture or the the pressure on the rim so it cuts down on uh the squealiness uh of the rim surface so that's a little t tip you can do when you're when you're putting them on maybe take a um 
a piece of paper or a piece of cardboard and put it in the back part of the the rim or between the rim and the brake pad and then adjust your rim then tighten them up with the allen key set so when you take that piece out the cardboard out then your rim set up your brake pad set up um again you have two videos uh tons of them out there showing all this stuff um Uh, yeah, yeah, that's true. Squealy noise uh, pays attention. People pay attention and hear you. Uh, just read some comments on the screen there. Um, so that's brake pads. Again, very basic uh, way to change those up. And I, if I did it on the, the bike here, you, the screen in the darkness here, you wouldn't really get much out of it because it's just you won't you wouldn't see it. So I'm just kind of glassing over, covering over some of the basic things. Um, oh, another little thing is on the inside of the brake pad there's a metal there's a metal post with a little uh, tab so the rubber part is covering that uh, metal part that if you if you wear down your brake pad lower than that that you're then you're getting into that metal part and metal on metal on your rims not being not going well for your rims just going to destroy your rims so if you hear that besides the squealiness if you hear that kind of scraping noise that could be two things. That could be the, the metal inside the brake pad, or there could be a rock or a piece of metal embedded in your brake pad surface. So if you notice that, uh, then take off your wheel or take off your brake pads and then kind of file away or pick out those pieces of rock or pieces of metal. And then again, that helps with your, um, with your braking power. Um, okay, moving on to the rest of the system. Another reason you might have brand new brake pads or relatively new brake pads on your on your um, on your bike, but that you're still having some braking issues with squeezing. The cause of that is worn out uh, or stretched brake cables and housing. So the cable runs from the brake lever all the way to your front brake or all the way to your rear brake, and 75% ish of your braking power uh, for both brakes is coming from your front brake because of the distance covered about 25 percent is coming from your rear brake so you have way more power in your front brake so you know when you get uh, in a sticky situation don't grab onto your front brake because you may just go head over heels so um you play around with the with adjusting both or squeezing both um but some of your power loss is is contained in the fact that your cables may be corroded inside your housing or the housing itself, itself may have disintegrated and causing the cable to kind of pop out of the housing and then you don't have that 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 grab on the, the efficiency is gone you don't have that grab so you can with your allen key again your trusty allen key main tool for most bikes built since the 1990s i guess uh is this the main tool you can adjust how much cable uh, pull you have from your pinch bolt down on your brake surface, uh, your your, your um, brake caliber. Um, you can adjust that. Or there's a sometimes on a lot of bikes there's a barrel adjuster. A little, I don't know if you can see that. There's a barrel adjuster right here. Again, um, I guess uh, just give me a second. I'll show you. Props. So. Um, this is where your brake pad would go in there. Um, this is your barrel adjuster here. So the cable and housing go through here and the cable goes in through here and there's a pinch bolt right there. Anyway, on a lot of good uh, bikes, um, medium range to higher end bikes, they usually have a barrel adjuster. So when you screw that up, that allow that gives you a little bit more um, cable pull. So it brings your brake pads a little bit closer to your brake surface allowing you to have that distance when you apply your brakes. You have that finger width distance between the brake lever and your, your bar. Um, just by doing that, that's a, that's a mini kind of way to adjust your brakes. Your main way to adjust your brakes, especially putting new brake pads on, and definitely you have to adjust your cable length when you're putting new brake pads on, uh, because it's, it's gonna be way off. And that's done by the, the pinch bolt down here, by loosening that off, squeezing your two brake, pads together like that on the rim, then the tires in there, and then pulling the cable down through your pinch bolt and then retightening the pinch bolt, okay? Basic stuff, not basic stuff, but just covering the basics of this and then you can kind of Google it on uh, on uh, YouTube videos or whatever, learn a little bit more about that. 
Um, what I like to do for my bikes, especially my winter bike, is I change up cables and housing every year, both brakes and, and shifting cables and housing. Uh, it just makes the riding, excuse me, way more easy, way more efficient. Um, brake pads, in the wintertime, I go through these kind of brake pads. Um, like uh, last time, my I didn't ride this much last year in the wintertime, uh, but previous winters, I usually go like three, four or five sets each um front and rear of brake pads because they just wear down in which time they just wear down so easy disc brakes i don't have bikes with disc brakes uh, but they add a lot more stopping power to your your control of the bike um, way more than rim brakes um, there's pros and cons to each one the pros are better stopping power better you know power generally um, especially in wet conditions than rim brakes um, Generally, they're mostly the same. Let's say these brakes, this system, the rim brakes are a bit easier to maintain, especially hydraulic disc brakes. There's hydraulic disc brakes and there's cable actuated disc brakes. Uh, cable actuated disc brakes are pretty much similar to these guys here uh, for setup and for adjusting. Hydraulic disc brakes are a whole different ca uh, pedal, kettle of fish. Take it into a bike store because you need to bleed stuff and it's a bit more complicated. Um, yeah, uh, and usually it's a bit more expensive uh, to buy brake pads for disc brakes than these guys here. These were eight bucks, so six, seven, eight bucks, something like that. Whereas brake pads run you anywhere from 12 bucks to 35 bucks for a set of brake pads for disc brakes, depending on your setup. So, uh, pros and cons. Uh, the whole debate in the bike industry of whether disc brakes are, um, are better, easier, whatever, than, than rim brakes. I like rim brakes myself. Um, yeah, uh, so. Adjusting brakes, your your uh, brake pads, adjusting your cable and housing, uh, changing up cable and housing on a regular basis. Every year, I usually change them up. My commuter bike every year, my road bikes um, every two years for disc brake for uh, for brakes. I I probably adjust uh, take change them up uh, every two years uh, on my shifter cables and housing, which we we'll probably move into now because we are getting into my hour here on on YouTube. Um, Disc, uh, uh, changing up cables and housing on my uh, shifter, my rear shifter. I usually change up the, the back part of the cable housing on my rear derailleur uh, every year because uh, it sees more grind because of the chain and cassette uh, and the derailleur, the, the lube from my chain gets in there and just, it's closer to the ground. So it, uh, it allows more uh, dirt to get in the cable line there. So I usually change that up. And you'd be surprised how way more efficient and way more fun it is riding a bike with, with new cables and housing than old cruddy stuff. Like the cable is metal uh, inside the, um, the housing. There's a, there's metal coating there's metal inside that, but there's coating of plastic and stuff that, that stuff wears out. So it's uh, metal on metal. Eventually rust is going to build up. Yeah. Um, so, um, Yeah, there's a uh, rule said uh, less stuff can get stuck in between disc brake pads and uh, discs and uh, this caliber or disc, uh, the disc and the brake disc pad. So was, that's true. There's, again, there's lots of debate o over that. Uh, there's yeah, it, the, the disc brakes do last longer uh, than than rim brakes. No, no, uh, no questions about that. Unless you're riding a cross bike and running through a lot of grit and stuff, I've seen a lot of bikes come in, uh, pads gone within two weeks of, of uh, riding in those conditions. Just they wear down so fast. Um, anyway, we won't get off subject on that. Um, Drivetrain, uh, your shifting system. Um, yeah, so on road bike, um, I have what's called STI shifters. Uh, most road bikes these days have these. And a lot, more, a lot of fun to use. What you again, and and or flat handlebar shifters, same idea. Click, click, click. You're you're adjusting your brakes. One of the reasons you get sloppy shifting is that your drivetrain is worn out. Uh, the chain, so the main drivetrain besides your shifters and cables, are your your uh, your chain rings, your chain and your cassette and your two derailers, front derailleur, rear derailleur. Uh, your chain wears out first. That wears out your cassette or your free wheel in the back here, and then eventually the chain wears down your your uh, chain rings. Um, changing up your chain 
uh, on a regular basis. I like to change up my chain, uh, my good road bikes pretty much every year because I usually do anywhere from 6,000 K to 10,000 K on a good summer or a good year. Uh, so chains last again, there's so many different things on where you ride, how you ride. I'm a bigger guy. So I put a lot more pressure in my, my pedal stroke than a, a light guy that weighs 130 pounds, 140 pounds. He does, he spins quicker. So he doesn't put as much force. He gets longer life out of his chain. I tend to go through chains a bit quicker. So, um, that affects my shifting and, and chains are cheap ish compared to other things. Uh, like your cassette, usually a cassette runs anywhere from 50 bucks to a hundred dollars, depending on the amount of gears and the quality of the cassette. Whereas a chain, uh, a good chain runs around $35. So it just makes more sense to kind of change up your chain on a regular basis than, than the more expensive parts. And then chain rings are depending on your chain ring, the quality chain ring, they get into, you know, 70, 80 bucks, depending on the quality, uh, yeah, uh, rule. Thanks. Um, yeah, the cheapest part of the drivetrain is your chain. Um, but before we get to the changing of things, uh, you need to take care of your drivetrain, and all that means is some elbow grease. Um, again, using rubber gloves, uh, latex gloves to um, keep your hands clean. Um, excuse me while I go over here. Basically, you take some old cloth, um, tear up your old T-shirts. I know my partner has been telling me for years to tear up my old T-shirts that I keep on wearing. Um, I don't. I use these. Um, some degreaser. I like using this pink stuff from Finish Line, but there's lots of different quality stuff, different different brands. Finish Line is pretty good. Um, Muck Off is another one. Uh, soap and water works also. Yeah, soap and water makes it a bit, you may have to use a bit, depending on your, how bad your dry train is, you may have to use a bit more uh, elbow grease and stuff like that. Um, but yeah, so basically what you want to do is shift into your, shift into your, your big chain ring and your small cog. With your degreaser, basically, you just spraying down the chain, hold the cloth. Uh, for disc brakes, uh, the guys running with disc brakes, when you're doing your back uh, drivetrain area, make sure you don't spray any kind of degreaser or a lubricant. Control the spray, I guess. You don't want disc brakes to, they don't want the degreaser uh, or a chain lube to get on your disc brake pads or your routers. That is just it's going to contaminate them, and there's uh, then you're you're spending money to replace all that stuff. So control how much you're spraying on your drivetrain system because it can get messy. Um, all I like to do is just take my cloth and hold it underneath the chain and spray a little bit surface, and then just pedal with it and hold my cloth like that for a couple times. There's little tools out there called chain cleaners i have one uh i basically use it uh once a year maybe twice a year on my winter bike um because if you use it too often the chain cleaner has little brushes and soap and clamps on your chain um it takes out the good grease as well as all the dirt so you have to pay attention i, I wouldn't overuse it i'd use the old system of a rag and and a cloth a rag and uh, some degreaser um, and just hold that spin through your chain uh, you can take most of this off with your your rag. There's brushes out there, tons of different kind of brushes. An old toothbrush also works. Wipe down the chain. Wipe down the cassette. You can take the wheel off the cassette, or you can take the sorry the wheel off the bike, and then you're kind of you're getting in between all this up like that. You want to get the especially mountain bikes and or your beater bike in wintertime. You want to get the grease that's built up in between the cogs. Um, get that out. That helps. Um, your drivetrain uh, longevity of that. Um, <clears throat> what else? Some of the comments here. Yeah, I mean, okay, see you, Raul. Um, yeah, 
Yeah, he's pretty much uh, squeaky brakes his brakes. Uh, deals what to do. <laughs> Rochelle, I have squeaky disc brakes. I deals what to do. Uh, Rochelle, we go way back into our drivetrain and, and squeaky brakes. Uh, take your bike into a bike store or, yeah, I guess uh, regular maintenance, uh, but take your bike into uh, a, a bike store. You may have to wait a while. Uh, there is pickup delivery for bikes, most bike stores now in Halifax because of the uh, situation we're in. So if you make an appointment with the shop that you, your local shop, they will actually come to your house and pick up your bike and then fix it and then deliver it to you. Uh, there might be a small charge in that. There's also uh, a van, a uh, Velo Fix, I believe, that will, they have a van set up, all the gear in it. You can call them. Uh, I don't have a contact for, for them, but uh, Google it. Uh, they will come to your house. Fix your bike outside your house, and then and then fix it for you, and then return it. Obviously, uh, so good service. They've been around for a couple of years now. Um, yeah, drivetrain. Once you get it all cleaned up, clean the chain, clean your derailleur uh, derailleurs, clean your cogs, clean your chain rings, and then um, then re lube. Um, there are basically two types of lube. There's a I like using the ProLink dry lube. There's a wet lube also. Um, I usually use dry stuff because I'm, I'm, I have access to my sh shop here. Uh, I used to work at a bike store. I used to, I ran the bike center for many years. Um, so I had access to an area that I can take my bikes in. I store them inside. Uh, I work on them inside. So I don't need uh, the dry lube. You have to apply more often because uh, it wears off, especially in wet conditions quicker. The wet lube stays on your drivetrain longer, uh, so you don't have to uh, clean it up as much, but it, it's tacky, so it picks up a lot of uh, dirt off the road. Um, so you have to spend more time, when you clean it, you have to spend more time cleaning it because it does attract a lot of gunk to your drivetrain, exasperating the wear and tear of your drivetrain. So, um, to each his own, I guess you can say. I, I like the dry stuff, uh, but I'm, I'm privileged, I guess, like said, since I have lots of places to kind of clean it up. Uh, but other people just put the, the lube, the wet lube on and, and go about their business. When you're doing it, you don't want to put too much on. It's just basically a drop on each link. Um, since I have a bike stand in here, I, I'm able to kind of pedal backwards or you pedal forwards and uh, apply it again. It's a uh, it's a drop on each link, and then I, I usually pedal, shift the gears. That allows the, the chain lube to kind of uh, seep in through all the moving parts of the chain. Um, and then I wipe off the excess because you don't want the chain lube to be on the outside, the surface of the chain. You want it to be on the rollers and the pins on the inside of the chain. That's where all the action happens. And so if you if you apply too much and you don't wipe it off, and then that attracts a lot of uh holds on to a lot of dirt from the from the, when you ride your bike um so wipe it off uh reapplied i i pretty much every like pumping on my tires i pretty much pump my tires up every i do two times a week sometimes three times a week depending on how much i ride um same with lube i usually lube up my chain i would clean it off first and lube it maybe once a week maybe every two weeks depending on how much i ride again yeah, um, regular maintenance saves you lots of money, lots of hassle uh, down the down the road. Um, and then shift through your gears. Uh, if you're, I won't go into it, putting new cables and housing in. Uh, just say I'll just basically say do it before it causes issues and stuff like that. Keep track of check your brakes, your brake lines over. If you're noticing that there's brakes in your housing, change them up. Uh, if you know your brake pads are wearing down, change them up. Uh, if you know you're, you're when you're getting back to dry train, um, one way, one easy way to notice that your dry train is, is starting to wear out is that when you're you're in there, when you're in a big gear, heavy gear, harder gear, and you're climbing a hill, and you notice that your um, your chain is skipping around on you, that means the chain is usually stretched and it's jumping around on the back cogs. Uh, and skipping around, uh, that's a sure sign that something is going on with the bike. If you catch it early enough, then it's an easy fix. Change every chain. If your if your drivetrain is worn past its date, in a sense, you when you change up your chain, you usually have to change up your cassette also. Uh, putting a new chain on a worn out cassette 
you're just going to have the same issues because it's not matching up perfectly. Uh, so usually uh, they both go together, new chain, new cassette, and then you're looking at, you know, close to a hundred dollars or so. Um, so catch it early enough, saves you money and saves you hassle. Um, even when you're on a flat surface riding and you're in big gear and you're, you're shifting and it's just not shifting properly. Uh, it could be cable stretch, could be cable wear, and it could be chain wear and stuff like that. So keep an eye on that. Um, I don't know. Uh, Karina, if you can send a note on how much time I have, it's 55 minutes into the live stream. I think we have an hour, so maybe I'll just wrap it up uh, in a couple minutes if you can do that. Um, but um, yeah, um, so ma regular maintenance tips, you know, pumping up your tires to the right pressure, wearing, tearing, uh, uh, wear, watch the wear and tear on your your tire surface, um, any nicks and, and scrapes on your tires, uh, any discoloration in your tires, time to get new tires, time to change up, uh, change up that. Um, rotate your tires rear to the front, front to the rear, saves up the longevity of your tires because your rear tire wears out a lot quicker than your front tire. Uh, changing up cable and housing and brakes and your shifters, uh, your gears. Um, adds a lot more enjoyment into the, the bike riding uh, experience because it's just so smooth when you get new cables and housing up there. It's like uh, it's like a whole new bike. Um, same with brake pads. I think we talked about that enough. Um, move up your chain. Um, yeah. Um, uh, probably time to wrap up. Okay. Uh, I think it's probably time to wrap up. A um, couple of quick things. If you get creaks, uh, from your, your from your headset, or from your seat post, or from your bottom bracket, uh, those are kind of the big things you want to kind of pay attention to. Uh, the creaking noises are not a good sign. It could be something simple that like you need to take out your seat post and put uh, some lube in there, some um, some grease, um, or your bearings. If you if you twin, turn your 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 handlebars like that and you hear creaking noises, your bearings are dry and you need to either lube them up, do an overhaul, uh, take out the old bearings, clean them up, put new ones in, or just change the grease, same as your bottom bracket. A bit more dif difficult because you have so many different bottom brackets these days. Uh, take it into a bike store. Um, the Campus Bike Center, Dalhousie, it's in the Studley, on the Studley campus, in the Studley gym. If you're walking towards the Wickwire soccer field, it's up on the left-hand side. That line, there's signs and stuff that there. Too. Unfortunately, they are closed right now due to COVID-19. Uh, but when we get back to normality, uh, take it in there. Uh, they would love to see you guys. Uh, keep your bikes rolling. Uh, if you have any other questions, you can email me at rethink at dal.ca, and I'm happy to uh, respond to them. Um, don't forget to to respect other cyclists on the road and other road users. Okay, thanks guys. Hope you enjoyed this. If you uh, if you did enjoy it, uh, I see a thumbs up. Maybe give me a thumbs up, or just send me a note. Uh, maybe we can do this again on a more in depth thing. Okay, thanks a lot, guys. Bye bye.